welcome to another episode of Amiga Retro Adventures. And as you can see before you, I have received my new 68,000 CPU socket, 64 pin dip. And you can see the one here is not as shiny because it has the corroded pins. That's why it has been removed. So I'm hoping once I solder this back into the board, it will resolve the stability issues. So we shall find out. And speaking of the board, that would be this one right there. Yes. So I'm going to install that into the, sorry, onto the motherboard. And um, I'll do some quick tests to see if this, the stability issue has been resolved. And if it has, then I can continue with this series of the 3.1.4 1 megabyte ROM upgrade. And that will cover showing you the creation of the ROM on the Amiga itself, my 1200, and the burning of it on the PC. And then of course, installing it into the ROM socket and seeing if it functions reliably. So um, this is just a quick update. Just want to let you know that things are moving along and uh, I will talk to you shortly. Thank you for watching. Hello. Uh, I just wanted to show you the uh, installation of this socket onto the motherboard. Now, if I clear it out all these holes properly, this socket should drop right into place. So let us see. I shall line this up to the holes here. And look at that. It just dropped right in. Perfect. That means I desoldered it you know, very, very well last time in my last video. And I'll flip the board over. And, and you'll see there all of these 64 pins will have to be soldered. And then I'll reattach this uh, wire, the address wire from the, uh, the newer socket for the one megabyte ROM, I think to pin 47 of the CPU. And that should be it. So once I get all this soldered and I have it back into the A2000 case, the Amiga 2000s case, um, I will see you at that time. And hopefully the stability has been fixed, the issue that we're having with you know the random crashes and whatnot. So uh, give me a bit of time and uh, I will see you shortly. Thank you. Hello. Um, you might have noticed in my videos, I have this interesting trend of saying I'm going to do something and then suddenly you're presented with something else. Um, maybe it's sort of boredom, but I just want to show you maybe a bit more of what I'm doing. So I've already soldered in the, um, as you can see here, the pins, all 64 of them. Now there's going to be a residual flux, which is always a good idea to clean that up. So I use some isopropyl alcohol here, spray and a toothbrush. Um, some people say, well, that maybe that is that static friendly as an anti-static. I've never had issues using this. Um, apparently, though, you can get anti-static brushes. But the fact is, uh, nine times out of ten, it's going to be wet anyways with the rubbing alcohol. So I don't, uh, I'm not concerned about that. Um, but if you want to do this yourself and you want a bit more peace of mind, perhaps you can get an, an approved uh, anti-static. Uh, toothbrush <laughs> I guess so anyway I will spray this here like so and then I will clean off the residual mess now there it will leave a slight residue uh, you can keep repeating the process until it's the tackiness of the flux because this is literally smearing it all over the place it does remove some of it. Um, you can use a cloth, maybe it's like pat it with a dry cloth to pick up some of the residual and then repeat this again to uh, get all of, the, uh, all of the flux off. Or you can just let it dry or blow on it like I just did and uh, repeat the process. And as you can see, it's uh, cleaned it up uh, pretty well. So I'm gonna repeat it a few more times off camera, make sure it's no longer tacky, because you can tell when it dries, if it's sticky or not, there's still some flux remaining. Um, then you can uh, clean that off, and uh, it should be as good as new. And then uh, I'll be back with you shortly, uh, once I attempt to install this back into the case of which it came. Until then, I will be right back. Hello. Um, before I throw this back in the case, I just wanted to show you that I did 
connect the uh, address wire to pin 47 of the CPU and I used some tape to hold the wire in place so it doesn't wander off when no one is looking. So that should take care of this. And now I will throw it into the case and uh, do a quick stability test and see what happens. I shall be back shortly. Hello. Once again, another distraction. Yes. Um, before I put the power supply in and whatnot to test this, I wanted to point out um, the CPU that I like to use on any new Amiga recaps or rebuilds, and you can buy these off eBay. It's actually a low power version of the 68000 processor. It is the MC68HC000, of course, P10 being 10 megahertz. So they're 100% compatible with the 68000. Uh, the difference is they are a low power variant. So they draw like one tenth of the power of the original 68000, and they give you the, the exact same. Uh, you know, bang for the buck that you're used to from those processors. So I just thought I'd share that with you. So they are kind of nice if you want to, you know, not tax the power supply or less heat, less power draw. You know, there you go. There's another option. And there are, they are new old stock. You can pretty much get them on eBay. So you just look for the, uh, the MC68HC000P10. So basically it's a 68000 with the HC in between the 68 and the three zeros. Isn't that nice? So I will now throw the power supply in and monitor and whatnot and uh, see what happens to this. So I will be right back. I have returned. As you can see, the power supply and floppy drive chassis is mounted on the main chassis. Um, you can hear the clicking of the hard drives, sorry, of the floppy drives. And as you can see down here, it is, uh, seems to be working fine. So the 3.1 ROM, yada, 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 waiting for floppy disk. So the CPU socket replacement is a success on the fact that at least it works. And now I will throw in the, all the other cards, including the 68040, and we shall see what happens if we have stability issues with that. So hopefully we will not. Hopefully the CPU socket replacement will solve this problem once and for all. And uh, I shall be back shortly and we will find out. Hello, I have returned. Um, as you can see before you, I have the Amiga 2000 fully assembled. Well, mostly. I just haven't attached the screws yet since I'm not 100% finished, but mostly. And I have the CyberGrafx64 hooked up to the uh, my LCD monitor 25 inch Hewlett Packard monstrosity um, so when I get to the creation of the ROMs using Remus and ROM split I can better see what I'm doing I also will have this hooked up to the capture card that I was uh, given for Christmas by my kids and um, I had some issues getting that resolved but it actually will capture the um, CyberGrafx 64's output now so when I do the tutorial on making the 3.1.4 ROM images the, uh, the customized one that if you remember correctly uh, will include the um, the workbench library and the uh, the new icon library so it doesn't have to load it from disk um, everything should work fine but unfortunately I have run out of time I have to go to work tomorrow so I don't want to rush this part of the video the uh, creation of the the ROM and whatnot so I want to give a good tutorial so I don't want to be rushed and make a mess of it just so I can have it done within the next 24 hours. So I'm going to leave this video as is and there will be a part three which will be the um, creation of the customized 3.1.4 ROM that will include um, basically uh, Dissecting the ROM using uh, ROM split, and then reassembling it. Uh, sorry, reassembling it using Remus, and then going over to the PC and actually burning it. So that should be done. Um, I should be able to do that video when I come back in about three weeks. So sorry about that, but I don't. I want to make a good tutorial. I don't want to rush things. So that's just the way it's going to have to be. Um, but at least I've given you some video up to this point, so it shows you how far along we are on this uh, on this series of episodes. So that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, wait about three weeks and I should have the other part of the video. And as always, thank you for watching.